off to UVic. Uh, this is much vaunted sevens program in the uh, blue and yellow. This should be a cracker of a game. Uh, East versus West University men's sevens rugby. Yeah, this is Pool C action. And uh, UVic. That's Andrew Ferguson kicking off for uh, McMaster right off the bat. Taken cleanly. That's Pat Kate with his ball on his hands on the ball. And number 12, Bo Parker reverses the flow. And, and this is the man who was so dangerous, Nathan. Uh, I can never pronounce that. Yanagia. <laughs> Thank you, Yanagia. Strong player. K moving the ball. Fergus Hall, a young player with UVic, trying to go on the outside. And a great tackle by McMaster. And the turnover is one. Good work yeah, by the Chris McMaster Gordon. winner. Sorry, Spencer. Chris Gordon showing a lot of discipline, made the tackle, then got right over on his feet. And stole the ball off Fergus Hall. Oh, good steal from Bo Parker. Ooh, interesting call here. Now the ball is stripped out, and he's called a knock-on. This is one of the mandates the RRB's made over the last eight months, that that is not a knock-on necessarily. If the ball is stripped out by the defender, and you see a violent action by the defender to rip the ball out, it's not deemed a knock-on. There was clear intent. Bo Parker was trying to get that ball. Mm -hmm. But here we go. Great opportunity for McKenzie putting in at the scrum. Yeah, and he appeals to the referee. That was an early push, and he got the call, and off he goes. Oh, McKenzie, good run by McKenzie, skipping out of the tackle. Chased hard. They'll try to keep him away from the post, but McKenzie rounds the corner to dot down. Great work by the UVic scrum half. Great awareness, knowing his skills. He used the width. He used the full width of the field, so his pace wasn't in question. And great awareness. When that penalty came at the scrum, all three of those McMaster defenders were tied up, so he tapped quickly and knew there was no defense there. Ran right back at the heart. Excellent awareness from him, Jamie McKenzie. We've seen him do it in 15s. Now he's doing it in the sevens front for UVic. Well, again, not to criticize the referee anywhere. That's one of our top referees. But you just look at the knock-on effect of that one interpretation. Was it a knock-on or was it the defender trying to strip the ball? Leads to the scrum, leads to the penalty, leads to the try. Yeah, and there's Kay with the conversion. Just slides wide of the right post. So Uvic take a lead early in this match. That's at five points to nil. Opportunistic break taken by uh, Young McKenzie, scrum half. Player who's been on the seventh circuit before and played some 15s for Canada as well. Kickoff is high, long. but a bit deep. Pressure applied. But McMaster oh, oh, oh. able to skip out of the tackle and some fast footwork by the big man. This is most important. Watch how he's staying in bounds, keeping that ball alive. Now creating that offside line. Fantastic run. McMaster moving that ball right to the touchline. Here's a one on one with Fergus Hall. And he's beaten on the outside. A little bit more experience than that McMaster side. The ball back inside the captain, Andrew Ferguson. And he's going to be able to dot down right behind the post for McMaster. Well, great support line from Andrew Ferguson, staying always an option on the inside. And when the break came, he was there to help out his teammate. I think it was Graham Dobbs who went. Sorry, no, it was um, Chad Strap. Yeah, good run from him. He went on the outside. He's, he's nursing a little bit of a limp as he gets back into play. But he did the damage. And then Andrew Ferguson, the captain, and, and a real sevens head on him, was there on the inside to keep the play alive and get the first score. For Mac. So he's got the score, he's got the conversion, and now is his responsibility for the kickoff now. Will it be high enough to give his team a chance to compete oh, for that ever. ball in the air? And it certainly is. And watch this hit. Boom. That is a good contact there by uh, McMaster. But Uvic strong enough to keep the ball. There's McKenzie again splitting the defense. He's really going to look for help this time. And he gets it. Oh, oh. good <laughs> footwork by Yanagia playing it off the foot. And now he's in support and able to feed McKenzie once again. Great backing up by this UVic team. The switch play to Kay, and he's looking to score for UVic under the post. Wow, what's, that's great rugby. Yeah, that's good sevens rugby, isn't it, Spence? Everyone contributing. Yanagia showing a lot of uh, awareness there to not go reach for that and knock it on. He tapped it with his foot, kept the play alive, and everyone offering up lines. In the end, it was Kay taking the, the, the reverse pass and just asking too many questions of that Mac defense, and he'll have the option to convert his own try. Well, perfect response for Doug Tate, the coach of UVic, after Mac got on the board with their, their try. And 
think the conversion was pulled, so that is a bad mistake. Uh, he wasn't that far out. We see him shaking his head there, Patrick Kay, the uh, Cowichan product. Can't help but notice from the far side, right into that one, you've got one of the greatest sevens players Canada's ever produced, Phil Mack, uh, a current UVic student and a leader in the Canadian sevens program. He's uh, injured with uh, some ribs, uh, so is that a contention? Let's hope he gets fit for Hong Kong for the Canadian cause. Ooh, and the challenge in the year, knocked on by uh, Uvic, so uh, McMaster's going to get the put into this scrum. Another high-hanging kick that time. And not to ignore your comment on Phil Mack, but you know what? He is, and also to tie it in with those kicks, he really has been one of those, uh, along with Nathan Hiriyama, one of the stalwarts of the sevens program for the last few years, particularly his kickoffs and conversions. I mean, the guy is, it's, it's unbelievable when you see some of the things those guys can pull off in terms of conversions. Sometimes we don't realize that they're really world leaders in the sevens game. Uh, we don't see the circuit as much as we'd like. Hopefully that'll change soon. Mm -hmm. But this time it's McMaster, and of course they're without Tyler Ardron, the man who was so dominant at this tournament last year, but uh, they're not talking about that, and they're actually looking forward to stringing uh, some performances together here, and they're very skilled across the midfield. And that was number 10, Chris Gordon, down the uh, left flank to start this movement going, and now they've moved it to the right flank. We'll see if they can sustain this ball in possession. A couple of bounce passes. so they'll Out the back door, like that one. Again, here's Chris. Nope, not yet. Oh, the, the break is taken, and that's a good work by number nine. That's good penetration. Uh, that's Graham Dodds once again. He's gone into contact, supported by his teammates, halfway down the field. Still in possession, McMaster. Well, I think McMaster playing smart tactics, being very direct, challenging the UVic players, not allowing UVic to play on their terms. Once again, there's Dodds. He's looking to do some damage on the outside as he did initially. You hear the referee calling for seven to move away from the tackle. Did not, so penalty is given and it's taken quickly by Ferguson. Oh, 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 deceptive step, but he got through. Still very, very physical at this breakdown area, both sides. Not giving a quarter or an inch anyway as they look to do some quick, fast feet and the offload. It turned out to be a knock-on, so Uvic can close out this half with a try should they choose. Pass has gone forward. So that'll be half time. And uh, thrilling stuff. Yeah, the hooter sounded, and we thought Uvic might have a go. Yannick Gia showing great skill, great awareness out there. He's uh, emerging as, as one of the Uvic leaders without the likes of Hiriyama and Duke. So uh, Uvic with two teams in this tournament. This is the stronger of them, the Vikes team. And uh, they're up by a, a margin, but it's possibly with a couple more conversions, should be more, only three points. And, and give credit to Mac, pressing right to the end there. And uh, they've got some impressive, uh, impressive individual, individuals. Mackenzie Chow, the very, unnotive, very Ontario native, um, doing well there and almost getting over at the end of the first half. But Yeah, I've been impressed by Chan. I've been impressed by Ferguson. I've been impressed by the winger, uh, Chris Gordon, on the left there, number 10, uh, particularly winning that first penalty of the game. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're a good side. And we mentioned Tyler Arger on the uh, Canadian back row forward in 15s and 7s uh, kickoff big band merchant. He's not with his team. He has rights. He's still just finished his studies. He's but he's away uh, actually on a speaking engagement. Um, but he's been one of the great finds from this tournament and uh, is really a great uh, leader and is probably the future of the game, not only in 15s but in 7s and is a, is a strong character too uh, and leads by example. I, there, I knew there was a reason I liked uh, <laughs> Chris Gordon. Chris Gordon. I, you know, I, just, I, I looked, I said, wow, this guy's got some, some homegrown skills there. And as it turns out, yeah, a native of Pickering, Ontario, yeah, my hometown. I wonder so, if he was a wanderer. I hope yeah, he was. I hope he was as well, but that's uh, great for you, Chris Gordon. Dumbarton High School, maybe? Possibly. Let's hope so. Some great programs coming out of Dumbarton under the uh, leadership of Terry Fallis out there. And... Um, so we'll see what happens in this second half. Very close contest, 10 to seven. Who would have thought? Nice too that we can come out to the West Coast. This tournament uh, has been at UBC in the past and this is the second year here at Langford at the Center of Excellence, the Rugby Canada Center of Excellence. This is a, a turf field, but um, we had some rain last night, but being on the West Coast, we can get sevens rugby going. So I'm sure there's a bit of an advantage for these UVic players you see here who are in mid season. Whereas obviously the McMaster players are uh, in midwinter, so um, 
a huge advantage for the West Coast based teams. What a kick, a huge hanging kick from Kay. Knock on advantage being played for you, Vic, and that's Bo Parker with ball in hand. He's a slippery runner, strong player, able to offload in the tackle. So Uvik in possession. Two on one and the fend coming from uh, uh, Antil Remy. And Uvik has re recycled well. Lots of numbers and lots of space. This looks dangerous. A low pass. It was a poor pass, wasn't it? So unable to uh, regather that was Fergus Hall. And Uvik, unfortunately, infringing at the breakdown. Player going off his feet, so now McMaster dodging that bullet. Opportunity to clear their lines, and they go for the kick. Interesting, and didn't find touch. And uh, it is Jamie Pablado at the back just to clean up the St. George's product. He's had a little run with the National Sevens program, came up to the development camp, and I know the coaches are looking at him. Oh, he's got a bright future, Pablado. Great head on his shoulders. He sees the game very well. Good play from you, Vic. Just moving it side to side, waiting for that crack to appear. And there it is. The McMaster defense, and there's the initial crack. And now where's the support? All right there. Now this is Fergus Hall, number seven, with the ball. Some fast feet. He won't die with it, though. See how he fends and then yeah. feeds off with his right hand? That's great play by the young Fergus Hall. Bo Parker scoring for you, Vic, under the post. Yeah, because had he gone to the top of your screen and tried to go on the outside, he would have been isolated. It would have been very hard to keep that play alive. But in the end, he, he sucked in the two Mac defenders and gave Bo Parker the easy run in. That is an old head on the young shoulders, what you just <laughs> saw there, because uh, Fergus is a, is a young player. He's with the, the BCU 18 program just recently. Uh, so for him to, to, to do that and have the skill and wherewithal to, to create that try is, is good rugby by him. Yeah, and these uh, athletes, the CW product, Fergus Hall, they get so much more exposure to top level sevens but it used to be an afterthought spence when we were coming through it's something you might do for a bit of fitness but now we have proper coaches the likes of shane thompson who's looking after him in the bc program this is it's great for these athletes and and i think uh, we had a comment from spence mctavish earlier on the ubc coach that the standard of this tournament has gone way up from last year and i think it's fair to say both on the men's and women's side the the, the sevens play is a much, much higher standard, and we're going to get some great games for the rest of the weekend. Oh, yes, you can tell. And even by that kickoff right there, taken by Bolkovic, dropped by Bolkovic, that uh, it's, it's great sevens rugby. Look at this organization from Uvic. All these players backpedaling to get back in the game, making Mac work, and then finally they spot the overlap. Just good stuff. Yanagi is going to get the try, but uh, you just saw that that was textbook sevens. The ball went one way. Everyone worked off the ball, and Yanagia got the reward at the end. Very, very patient and, uh, and skilled sevens play. Started with Fergus Hall on the right to come out of contact and not engage the defense, bring the ball back to the right, and then Pit Blado to have the time to hold the ball in his hands and find the, uh, Yanagia with that long pass and take the hit. He was cleaned out, but he created the try for his team. Good work by uh, Uvic. And Pipleto's pass there was long and flat and had pace on it. And when you're tired, you see those Mac defenders with their hands on their head. When you're tired, that can take you right out of the game in defense. And that's exactly what happened, and Yanagia ran it in. So the successful or unsuccessful uh, conversion attempt by uh, Patrick K. Yeah, Doug Tate putting a couple of subs on the field. I uh, see Remy Ansel coming in again, and uh, Liam Murray as well, so uh, resting a few of the legs. See Dubrowski and Murray, very important for this UVic effort, because you can't get it done without the big man doing mm -hmm. the graph, making the tackles, winning the rucks. And there is Remy Ansel putting the tackle in. This time, Mac got an opportunity to attack. They go wide. Bo Parker doing his job and showing discipline at the breakdown. Now you can't see it on your screen, but Patrick Kay is well 30 meters deep behind his defense as a sweeper. And here's where he might come into play as, as Mack breaks out. Here comes Patrick Kay, and he's on the ball. That's him, number four. And he would have been there to make that tackle. Mack in fringe. Man off his feet playing the ball. So Uvix got the ball, and there's our sweeper, Patrick Kay. Ball's in Pit Blado's hand. He's going for the chip and chase. Well, let's see if he gets the bounce, young Pit Blado. Mac McMaster in possession once again, trying to run out of their defense, but Pablado comes across to make the tackle, then he's up on his feet to take the next attacker. Good work by the youngster. Yeah, great cover from Richard Ormrod there, the substitute. He went all the way back, and he got the bounce and did well. This time, it's Davos Strojan, Strojanov. Oh, the little, little skip step. 
Was he held? No, says the referee, so he places it back. But Kay plays the ball on the ground. He's even going to question this one. No. <laughs> There's no question that He's was an infringement. got to be on to play that ball. Yeah. Well, Maka got numbers here. Good option to miss out because Uvic were pinching in. This it. could go left, the top, left of your screen. There's numbers. And there's space as well. There's gaps in between that defense. There's a gap you want to take and feed. Just short, second effort, tied up. Good pressure from Liam Chisholm there. Well, Mac is really being made to work hard for this opportunity. Well, Liam Chisholm steals the ball of the ruck. It was out of the ruck. Ooh, interesting call. Ansel. Is he going to have the pace? Oh, he looks inside. Excellent work by Ansel. He didn't have the pace, but what he did was he did a hesitation step to stop the defense and then move again. Yeah, the product of McGee High School in Vancouver and the UBC Old Boys now at UVic. He's got a great mustache, Ansel. <laughs> little, little magnum going on there. A little bit of newscaster going on <laughs> there. I love it. Good but character. Kay will have a shot at the conversion. I wonder if Liam Chisholm, the man who stole the ball to make that play happen. He said earlier he was playing for the uh, UBC Okanagan team last year, and that's where he was spotted. He's now part of the national training program. He's out here at the Center of Excellence, and uh, he's someone that they, they think could be a, a very important guy in, in Canadian rugby. He's now playing for UVic, the arch rivals of UBC, so I'm sure his, his old <laughs> buddies are giving him some stick. Here's Kay once again for the restart. High into the sky, and that's Ansel on the, the restart, putting great pressure. Bit of a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside for McMaster. And he's going, but again, this is where you could be isolated as he turns the ball over, and Bo Parker just bats it back to Patrick Kay, who knocks it out of bounds. As the hooter sounds, that'll do it. Handshakes all around. Convincing performance from Uvic, probably to the form book, probably what we would have expected. But uh, Mac not able to secure quite enough possession to get their danger runners in space. But Uvic did exactly the opposite, stole some ball and used the uh, fringes and got around the outside of that Mac defense. Well, Mac had a very good first four minutes and then they sort of faded a little bit as a Uvic experience and pressure started to really get to them.